O'Neill is like one of my um, favorite uh, marketing uh, guys that are out there. And he's oh, making some sure. massive innovations in the, in the in the in the space, you know. And and so uh, and I just want to welcome everyone to uh, to like new patient secrets. Uh, on today's episode. Um, we're going to talk about newsletters, right? You know, do they work or do they not work, right? You know, and and so I'm super, I'm super excited. And so Neil, maybe very quickly, I'm going to get the, um, I'm just going to, you know, like, I'm just going to ask you, like, do newsletters work, you know, right, Neil? Well, I've been doing them for over 16 years now. So they do. And uh, I actually ran it in my private practice when I had that back in South Florida. You know, this was, of course, the days before uh, Facebook and all of that. But it's still one of the best performing um, things I did in my practice from a marketing perspective. And uh, we, we do it now for practices all over the U.S., Canada. Uh, we send out actually over 5 million direct mail newsletters uh, a year for practices uh, around the country. Um, right. And they get great results. So our clients that actually- 5 million a year? That, that's 5 million a, and growing. That's a lot of stamps. That's <laughs> a, a lot of licking, but uh, no, it's- uh, we keep the post office in, in check for sure. We, we, we're keeping them going, uh, but but it it works. It works, and and so one of the things that uh, is really critical to think about in today's world is how you're maintaining your relationships, with, especially with your lowest hanging fruit, your your best people, which is uh, your customer list, right? Your patient list, um, mm-hmm. and how do you have someone when they leave the clinic who is so happy that you changed their life and got them out of pain, got them moving again? How do you get that person to stay emotionally connected, feeling the same way, even develop that relationship further years into uh, the future, right? And so if you're kind of out of sight, you're out of mind. Uh, So newsletters are a critical way to keep that relationship going, to present what's happening in the clinic, to showcase value, to to maintain your practice and your therapists as thought leaders, right? So if something happens to that person or if they had a friend or family member that has a pain or an issue, they think of you first, right? Uh, yeah, so if someone thinks their need, if they're thinking of you first before they think of another solution or go looking yeah, for well, another solution. Well said, Neil. That was amazing. You know, I totally agree with you. And 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 I just want to add a few things, but before do before we get going, like type in the chat, like um, what's the biggest challenges are you having with the newsletters right now? You know, whether it's patient newsletters or physician newsletters, type in the chat um, and and because we want to find out, like we want to answer all the questions that you have in here. So type in the chat, what is the biggest challenge you have right now with having like with newsletters, right? And just Neil, uh, as people type in, I'm, I'm totally, uh, um, I'm totally on the same page as you. I think like, you know, right now, when it comes to like marketing, you want to be top of mind, you know, right? Absolutely. And newsletters is just one channel of many other channels that mm-hmm. reminds past patients that, you know, like you're still around and that you can still help them, right? It was really critical, especially this last year. I think this is where uh, it got even better. It, uh, we see newsletters uh, just get better and better over the years. Um, and, and it was an opportunity for clinics to show their their customer list. Hey, we're still open. We're doing these things to keep you safe. We're actually treating people and they're showing images and and photos of them treating other patients and getting good results with it. It it created that certainty for those past patients to say, hey, they are working. They are making things safe and I can come in. So it was a good platform, especially this last year uh, to communicate that. Okay. And so I'm, I'm curious, Neil, when it comes to newsletters, how is like the newsletter like marketing channel compares to like, you know, the other uh, marketing channels, right? You know, like how does it compare to like, maybe like, you know, like, um, like Google ads or like Facebook mm-hmm. ads or like, like just traditional like email marketing, right? You know, like w- w- what type of like, like how does it compare uh, from, from what you've seen uh, in your business? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the important thing to hear from a, uh, when you're looking at it as a practice owner is you're looking, what are the objectives that I'm trying to do? And where do, um, where do newsletters fit in to help me with this? So you, you, the, the mistake I often see practice owners make is they try to compare doing a newsletter to some other source like a Google ads. Uh, in, in, in our strategy that we help clients implement, uh, it's a five level strategy. The top part is actually building uh, your online discovery. So you, you're, you're trying to get your, your practice well-known, ranked well on Google, people coming through Google ads, Facebook ads. You're trying to get masses of people to discover your practice. They need to come in and then build trust. 
So then that's where you're building online reviews, how your website looks, uh, your brand presence online. They come down further into that funnel. They got to be able to convert on your website to a mechanism where they're actually going to reach in for a phone call or request an appointment. And then we get them in the clinic we got to make sure that they they buy into their plan of care and come the whole visit. So there's that marketing aspect of keeping them in the clinic as a through, uh, thorough patient. And then we turn them into raving fans. And so this is the bucket where newsletters really reside is really in this raving fans part. So when we're talking about a patient newsletter, this is the mm. area that we're using it. We're not using a, a patient newsletter to necessarily talk to the, the public, the cold public that don't really know much about us. We're using this newsletter to keep a public relations action going with our uh, past patients, right? And current okay. patients leverage that. So, so this is a very important point that you just brought up, right? So so you've seen that, so in your world, do newsletters is most effective on the past patients, but you're not using it for cold campaigns where like you send out like 2000 to everyone in this post of code and majority of these people don't know you, right? Yeah, we've not seen that work that well. Um, in the, the one thing that can be a little different is a postcard uh, that goes to, to, a, to a cold public. Newsletters really don't work as well doing that. Uh, and you're better utilize, utilizing those, those dollars uh, if you're going to do direct mail to, to, to your customer okay. list. That's the best use for those. Physician newsletters is a little different. Obviously, you're trying to, to work within a network of doctors uh, in yeah. your area. So you can do some direct mail pieces. You can use them as handouts when you do uh, you know, visits to the doctors and things like that. Okay. That's interesting. interesting. And, and so, so, t so typically, um, typically, uh, actually, you know, you know, what I'll do let's get into, you said something that was really good. So I thought maybe we could like dive into it. Let's talk about like, um, how, what is this, uh, what are the successful ingredients like in, uh, a post, uh, like in a newsletter, right? So let, let's kind of go through this and go one by one, you know? Yeah, so. absolutely. So, so three critical steps to making a, a patient newsletter, or even physician newsletter work for you. And so, uh, you know, if you've tried this in the past and you've sent say like email newsletters out or used a company to send kind of branded or um, kind of templated newsletters out uh, and you got kind of okay results, you're just kind of doing it, going through the motions. Here's some things that you can really look at to say, hey, how can I get more out of this? How can I get more of my customer list taking action to call me again or send a friend and family? So uh, these three steps come down to knowing who you really want to target uh, making sure you have the right content, the valuable content that they're going to engage with, and then making sure that you actually get that information across lots of different media channels and how you deliver it. So talking about this first step here is knowing your ideal audience. So if you, as you craft this newsletter, if we're going to talk about uh, a patient newsletter, uh, we're going to really craft that towards communications to a past patient, right? Uh, and also uh, current patients, you know, we'll be handing this out in the clinic is a great thing to send it to there. Um, those are, those are really the two critical audiences here. So again, so past patient and current mm -hmm. patient, right. You know, right. Yeah. The goal is to stay top of mind here. So you're providing value in here. You're creating, you're trying to keep it personalized to keep that emotional connection and you have calls to action. Like, Hey, come on back in or try out this, uh, you know, offer or some, some kind of call to action to get them back rolling in. Uh, now you wouldn't send a patient newsletter necessarily to a doctor, right? Because it's a different message there. We want to have uh, a physician newsletter that's separate, that's different, that speaks to the pain points a doctor might have uh, in terms of trust and making sure that patients come back thanking them, um, that you uh, are, you know, showing yourself as an expert or as a leader in this particular condition. So it's going to be a different. Um, a different type of newsletter that would go to a doctor or an insurance network or an adjuster or something like that. And then, um, you know, something here that's a little bit different. Uh, this is new. I don't think I've seen a lot of people do this. This yeah, is like coaching. So, is, it, is it using newsletters to poach uh, therapists? Absolutely. So uh, I'll give you a little scenario here. This was a great mechanism for us in our practice when we had it. Um, we would actually use our patient newsletter, which showcased a lot of about the therapists and the people getting gotcha. better in our clinic. We would actually tack on a thousand therapists and therapy assistants in our local area uh, onto our mailing list. And so once a quarter, that uh, group of therapists would actually get our patient newsletter. And what it does was it was just a long-term PR action to keep our brand in front of therapists who were working in different places around us. 
And in, in a place in South Florida where it's extremely difficult to get a therapist uh, on board uh, and find someone because there's not enough schools there for the demand. I remember uh, prior to me selling the clinic, there was almost, we we're wrapping up the deal. We're ready to get to sell the practice, ready to sign the dotted line. And one of my therapists left because she was a little skittish about the, the deal. And, and she didn't know the new uh, therapist that was going to take over. So now I had to fill a spot. Well, basically that week I had three people walking with their resume saying, hey, you're looking for a therapist. And I, yeah. I lined them up for the new owner coming in. So that was a beautiful position to be in because I had this PR marketing machine going for my therapists uh, in the local area using newsletters. So, so Neil, I'm just curious, you know, like, um, were you sending these, like, like, are you sending the same newsletter, like the same patient newsletter, or is this completely different type of newsletter? Like, no, for, like, I, you know, you can, you know, if you really, if you are, let's say a bigger clinic and you really need to have uh, a consistent flow of therapists coming in to hire, you should yeah. create almost like your own uh, newsletter in a way for therapists. But what we do was just basically tacked on uh, yeah. the number of, of therapists, the addresses to that list or emails, you know, too. So, yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. You know, well, and, so, and, so, and, and so how would you like, how would you get like their like mailing address or you send it to the clinic that they work at? <laughs> Cause if I was an owner, yes. like if I was an owner and I saw what, this from a company, I'd be so pissed. So like, like, like how are you actually sending it to the, to the therapist? You know? Um, well, in, in Florida at that time, uh, our Florida board, the licenses and the address of the people with the licenses was uh, okay. a database that you could purchase or get for free actually at that time. So okay. we were able to okay. use it. I know in some states you don't have that capability. Okay. I think a lot of them do now. Uh, so, okay. but some of them did have their work address there. So we did get an occasional call, but so what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure we're going to talk about the end, like, you know, like if you can physically mail them something, it could also be an email, right? You know? So. Yeah. And we'll get to that in the third step here, how you should be delivering yeah. your, your newsletter. So first step is really knowing, you know, your audience, who you're trying to target. Um, yeah. And the second step we need to talk about actually, is, actually, actually okay. like just before that, like, uh, what's your definition of a past patient of like um, um, versus, yeah, what's your definition of a past patient? So like anybody, that's been, that, anybody yeah. that's been discharged uh, from from care, um, and ideally, what you what you need to to do to uh, to get maximum um, connection with folks is. Uh, you know, you, you tend to, we recommend to people usually a list of about three to five years old. So the patients that you've seen in the last three to five years, that's where you're going to get your maximum ROI. Um, you know, people's emails change, uh, obviously, if they might not be connected with you on social media anymore, and, and people move, right? So addresses are, are sometimes they go that and plus, it's the engagement part of it. So uh, mm -hmm. if someone has not come back to your clinic in five years, they're probably not going to come back, right? Or it's a very lower, it's a lot lower chance. So three to five year list is a good one to keep working through. Cool. So, so this is part of my, uh, my, my next favorite part, you know, like what do you write in it? You know, right? Like, so Neil, right? Like yeah. what type of content do you write in this newsletter, right? Yeah. So again, remember the purpose of communicating with your past patients is to stay top of mind as an expert to turn to. And uh, you've also, you think about, we have a very unique, um, uh, type of care that we do with our patients compared to many other, you know, medical uh, practices, we, we actually build a relationship very closely with our, uh, our patients, right? Because uh, we have time with them. So we want to also uh, tell a lot of stories and keep an emotional connection. Uh, if we look at, especially think about just social media, people gravitate towards inspirational stories. So we want to convey the same thing uh, within our newsletters, uh, you have amazing stories that happen every single day in your practice, like all these transformations of people getting better and people have incredible stories. So you need to be able to collect those stories in a way that's efficient and then be able to portray them. Um, and newsletters is a good mechanism for that. So telling yeah. stories is, a, is definitely a critical part uh, of that. So you need to spotlight your therapists. Have they done any uh, particular tr extra training? That's a great thing to put in there. Showcase techniques. Maybe you've got some new equipment like a laser therapy or something like that. That's great things to put in there. You're showing that you're on the cutting edge, that you're still you know, very relevant for, for medical care. Um, and it's, you're, you're also showcasing any kind of events or celebrations that might be going on. The, the one thing here is to really, again, how personal can you make it? And that's where um, some clinics are really, really good about uh, designating someone to 
take video in the clinic, someone to take a lot of nice pictures of uh, therapists working with patients. And of course you get written consent to do those kind of things. But the more you can kind of gather this uh, visual aspect and telling the story of what's happening within the clinic, the better crafted your newsletters can be. And this, this is gonna help to showcase that emotional connection that you're trying to maintain with folks. Uh, third step here is really about creating value in this. So when I get it, why would I wanna keep this? Uh, so you're, you want to be putting things that are therapy related. So an exercise tip of the month, um, tips on how to, let's say, uh, if you're having sciatica, what could it be coming from? Uh, so things like that are really good to put in there, kind of an educational content, but also non-educational stuff is fun too. People do gravitate to puzzles or recipes, like healthy recipes, like smoothies and stuff like that are great to put in there too. Puzzles, have, eh? That's interesting. Yeah. So I guess, here's an example. What's that? Here's an yeah. example. We have a client in Arkansas, right? Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like you're, um, <clears throat> you know, we've, we've done different stuff for them and you, we get all kinds of different uh, levels of, of effectiveness in certain newsletters. But when we started to do ones that uh, were very like dessert or uh, uh, I was like the Paula Dean butter effect, you know, it's like that kind of uh, Southern cooking we, yeah. we put those kind of recipes in and people started to really uh, engage even further with the newsletters. So it's fascinating in, in types wow. of behaviors based on where they are uh, in the country. Recipes on, uh, they should have recipes on um, the Instapod or the air fryer, right? You know, Something like, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's a small component, but you're just, what you're, the goal is here is you're trying to, again, portray the stories that are happening in the clinic, provide value, create, uh, create that emotional connection and give, give value or give tips and advice and things that will get people to hold on to that for, for a while. We get many comments where um, patient, the, the therapist will say, hey, you know, the patient came in and they came in with a stack of newsletters in a folder because they've been keeping them. Or they, they say they keep it on their fridge because it's got that recipe on it. So there's lots of ways to keep it around and in front of the, the people's eyeballs. You know what's interesting, Neil? You know, like when you think about the newsletter, right? like your concept of newsletter, to me, it's really like um, an Instagram page, you know, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we got all this, like, if you, if, if you look at the Instagram page here, like, there's all this amazing content on here, you know, like, you got like their therapist highlight, you're doing something fun, there's like re reviews, they do behind the scenes of what's going on at the clinic, they're doing giveaways, you know, like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of like, customization and personalization here. So what, what you're really saying is like, how can I put all the amazing content that you actually have that shows like personality, culture, um, that's actually ready on your Instagram thing and put it in a, in a, in a, in a yeah, you can, a, you can actually right. take a lot of those kind of, uh, slides, right. And actually plop them right into, uh, right. a little bit longer format in a newsletter that would go out digitally that would go out, uh, on your social posts and then also direct mail. Yeah. Hey, look at this five tips on good mental health. Like that's a section mm -hmm. on there. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Great things like that. Yeah. Right. Or like mm -hmm. what else is there, you know, like, um, and, and you see a lot of this type of three stretches to combat like neck and upper pain, you know, like those are like those tips, educational tips that you would have. Right. Yep, so absolutely. Yep. All right. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then lastly, you got to call them to action too. So, Hey, if you're having it in, it's good to have your newsletters kind of themed. So let's say the theme of this month is going to be on back pain and sciatica. The next month is going to be around knee pain and ACL recovery, you know, so it's good to kind of theme the the month and then also if you can tie it into say a holiday it, or something like a that. body part or is it theming like is it theming like a pain or is it theming like an event you know we find that it's it's effective to have a, a theme around a, a, it can either be a body part pain um or it might be a particular time of year so like for example new year's is a great time because it's all about resolutions right so hey meet your physical goals get rid of your pain get back to health that's a big focus of like a January type newsletter, right? Okay. Um, so it's good to, like I said, have like a back pain issue or you have a, a neck pain issue, headaches. Uh, if you're doing a sports clinic, you know, tied around that particular thing for the, for the month. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. And, and what's the best, you know, like what's the best performing call to action? You know, like you've seen, you know, you've seen over, like, like you said, you've done over 5 million newsletters. Like what, is like the best like call to action what's the best offer you should have on this newsletter to get someone to actually call the clinic you know right or to come to the clinic right yeah so what i'll say here is uh there's not one thing that fits all 
you have to know your audience and you have to know what speaks to them. Uh, so for what might work in a sports clinic, right, would be very different for a pediatric clinic or for a geriatric clinic and for different parts of the country, right? So if you're in a rural area, uh, it might be a very different call to action versus someone in a, in a city, right? Um, so that's, that's important to keep in mind, like you can get ideas from different places and try things out, but you have to look and measure and see what's working and then replicate that in your clinic. So for, for some clinics, uh, it turns out to be like, Hey, you know, if you're, if, are you having this pain again, right? Give us a call today. Talk to our therapist, usually a free screening or, uh, some kind of free, you know, Hey, come back in, we'll take a look at you or call your therapist, uh, that tends to be the better uh, mechanism there. It's, it might have some different layers of offers in there. So, you know, your primary one might be, Hey, come back in for a free screening. Uh, but you might have another offer in there. Hey, we have a, a laser therapy that's new and get a free 15 minute session on laser. And then that gets, also gets them in the door on that and they can sell them on a package or whatever. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, it's a variety of things, but I'd say the main call to action is usually, can you get them back into uh, some kind of screening or a way that you can have a 10 to 15 minute, like, you know, uh, look at them. Yeah. And, and, and it paid or free? Usually free. Okay. So, and, and but, is that but, the copy that you find the most effective, like free screening or is it free posture screen or free back scan or like, what, what is it, what is it that you find that like, you know, is, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, that works the best you think? Yeah. Again, this is, it's, it's, it varies across the board. So I can't say like one particular thing works better than another because it, it really, it comes down to your area and your, your audience, but usually, uh, you know, a free back pain screening or, um, you know, uh, you know, a free, you know, headache screen or something like that works yeah. pretty good. Now, however, I, you know, I will say too, for, um, because the U S and Canada have some, have some differences in, in how people approach healthcare, um, I do find our Canadian clients might have a, um, a, a paid offer, or it might be like, Hey, get 50% off a combination of a, you know, massage and acupuncture, you know, right. along with this. So it, you have to kind of, like I say, for you, you have to test what kind of calls to actions work better yeah. for you. What kind of offers work better for you? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what I would test and that'd be interesting. I would test like, you know, maybe not like I would test like maybe a free massage appointment. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, like a 30 minute one, just to get them in the door, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, or even like product. Eh? Have, have, you, have you seen anyone like test products saying like, Hey, look, yeah, we've had some of those. Um, the like the product as a way to be able to, mm -hmm. like, you know, convert them to another plan of care, you know, right? Yeah, so. we've had some clients that are kind of uh, big into promoting like CBD oils and that kind of stuff. And they'll have something around that and might have a free, you know, uh, either a free offer or like a, a coupon offer or something for that particular product or, um, um, yeah, like the shockwave therapy or like a laser therapy. Again, there might be some kind of discount on that offer or, or even a free, you know, trial of it. Um, yeah. So yeah, again, it's, it's very interesting how people respond to different offers depending on their area. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's great. You know? Mm -hmm. And so, and the third thing, you know, is the how. The third thing you know? here. Okay. Yeah. So this is an area. So we, we talked again about uh, making sure that, we are targeting the right people here, right? So make sure you really, I'd say first and foremost, the greatest place to start is making sure that you have a good newsletter going to your, your past patients and you can leverage that too with your current patients so they can give it to friends and family. Then we're gonna have you know, awesome content in there. That's the kind of the harder part where you have to really like work within the clinic to get good images and, 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 and copy. And then the third part here is to make sure it gets in front of the people, right? Let's just face it today. We have, you know, if you think about it, you you're on email, Instagram, you know, Facebook, um, TikTok. I mean, TV, you got 800 channels on TV to be in front of. So your audience is very dispersed, right? TV ads back in the day used to work really well because you'd have about 20, 25% of your audience in front of that one channel where your ad was going on. But now today that same um, ad gets in front of about 2% of the people. Right. So just realize that you have to make sure that you're putting the effort into this marketing um, piece. You want to make sure it gets in front of as many people as you can. I always say maximum eyeball exposure. So 
um, email is very important, right? But let's realize that with email, it doesn't get delivered to everybody. You know, you might have a 20, 30, 40, maybe sometimes a 50% open rate uh, on these if you're really good. Uh, but you're still missing 50% of the people you're trying to reach, right? Um, social media, we wanna make sure that gets out across all of our different channels. So again, that casts a wider audience. You're trying to build up your followers. You're doing all kinds of posts there. This is another thing that can go in that, that can link back to maybe something you have on your website. That's where the newsletters are hosted or even just putting on there as kind of a flipping book or something like that. Uh, so social media is another important place to put that up. Um, direct mail, this is where, uh, especially, um, you know, in the US, but also in Canada, in Canada, it's a little bit more expensive to direct mail. It can still be very much done. Um, but this is where a lot of practice owners kind of shy away because there is this cost to it. You have to print, you have to put the postage on it and it has to get delivered. Uh, but the thing with direct mail is it actually will get to 95% or more of the people on your list. Really? So, 90, 95%? Yes. Is, is, is that for a certain demographics, Neil? Or are you seeing like it works for all like young and old people, right? It gets in their mailbox. Okay. They have to touch it. Yeah. Right. And think about, uh, and this is a you know conversation like, oh, young people, they won't even, they don't look at mail, right? <laughs> they don't do this. That's BS, right? Because think about when you go to the mailbox, is it empty? No, there's usually a boatload of, of catalogs and different stuff in there, right? Trying to sell you different things. That's because it works, right? So- um, do, most, do most people like look at it? Because, you know, maybe I'm old school, but like when I get like those flyers in the mail, I like flipping through it. Maybe it's like, yeah. I'm like nostalgic. I like, I like something yeah. like physical, you know, right? Yeah. Canada Post actually did a really good neurological study you know, they put EEGs on people and they actually did eye tracking software and all this kind of yeah. stuff. So they, they found that, um, and, and they compared like how people behave when they looked at an email, when they looked at a, a landing page, and then when they looked at direct mail. And what they found was uh, people were, uh, their, their attention span for direct mail was about 25 or 30% higher than on a digital Right. If you think about when you pick something up in your hands, you're actually paying much more attention to it than you would like uh, with the inbox uh, for your email or social. You know, you're flicking through things pretty quick. Right. So in today's saturated digital world, it's a nice way to stick out. Um, mm -hmm. And as I said, what you're looking here is for not just one media that you're trying to go across. You need to be across many different media. And uh, mm -hmm. direct mail is a, is a very important part of that. And actually, direct mail works even better today than it did in the past because there is the saturation of digital exposure. Um, and oh, I, agree. I would liken it back to uh, email. Email's too easy, right? You know, like, yeah, well, easy. here's a funny one. I, I saw this meme and it made me laugh because uh, this, you know, I've, I've been around since, you know, kind of the email started, right. Which is funny. Uh, but I remember back in the day when you first had your AOL account, and you got that first, like, you've got mail. And you were like, yes, you know, you're so excited, right? And then your inbox, uh, I was really full uh, in, the, in the, uh, your mailbox, right? And you're like, oh, going through my mail again. That's because where all the bills would be. Uh, and in today's world, it's like, you don't want to face your email inbox because there's hundreds of emails in there. But when you get something cool in the mail, you're excited for it, right? So it's kind of mm -hmm. the, the reverse of what used to be 20 years ago. All right. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So, so uh, just back to, I just want to read it at this point. So have you found, is that the same, like, you know, I know what you talked about, I just want to dive a little deeper. So, um, so the studies and what you've seen is that like young, like the younger people, like the twenties and thirties still like they, they yeah. will still look at the direct mail. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if they're living in a place, they have to get, they get the, you know, they make do a lot of bills online and stuff like that, but they still yeah. have a, a mailbox to check for the most part. Okay. Um, okay. And let's cool. face it, uh, you know, for, for many of the people that we treat, uh, the majority are usually, you know, 35 plus, right? Okay. Um, we do, of course, see younger people, but yeah. most clinics out there, they're orthopedic, you know, yeah. our bodies start to break down a little bit as we get older, we have aches and pains yeah. and issues and stuff like that. And sure. so, sure. you know, those type of people are, are, do have mailboxes where they will receive bills and things like that. And, and they do yeah. pay attention to more things uh, in reading. So it is a very good mechanism. Our, our best performing clients are 
are ones that are doing all the websites and digital and social media and they're very interactive and they provide a lot of great content and they are doing newsletters and they are direct mailing newsletters and they get you know this kind of consistent influx of returning patients plus all the other things that they're doing from a digital standpoint driving in new patients that way and it just really yeah. helps build up the clinic so so uh, what type of conversion rates do you see like on direct mail like let's just mm -hmm. say you send out like a thousand um to your past patients you know and let's just say these are patients who's been with you for the last three to five years you know right mm -hmm. um you know uh like what type of conversion rates would you see neil yeah so average what we see across the board uh we've been in some data research on this is about 1.2 percent conversions so okay. let's break that down so if you have a thousand people in your list that you're mailing to a thousand past patients, uh, typically you'll see or, or we'll ramp up to um, 1.2 so thousand, about 12, so thousand, right? Yes, yeah, so or right. a thousand. You're going to yeah. see about uh, 12 returning patients from that newsletter that month, right? Okay, actually, let, let's do this even more. I, I love the rehab math, right? So, so it's a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. You send out a thousand and you convert at 1.2 uh, times 1.2%, you know, that's 12, right? You know, right. right. And is that, is that per month? Like if you, did, this is like, like, let's just say each month you send out a thousand, right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that means it's 12 reactivations in a month, right? Is that what you're saying, Neil? Yep. Okay. And then, and then uh, let's just say, what's the average plan of care, you know? Uh, well, here in the U S it's about 960. Okay. Let's just, for simplicity sakes, let's just do like 800 bucks. What do you think? Sounds good. In the middle, right. So 800 bucks, right? So what is that? I'm not very good at this. What's 12 uh, times 800? How much is that worth in dollars? Right. I got 9,600 there. 9,600. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. And so how much would like it cost me to send out? Like, so let's talk about this. So this is like, in terms of like revenue, right? Like how much would it cost me? You know, like what's my cost? to send something like this sure to send a thousand all right typically um don't quote me on this because i don't i'm just going off the top of my head here but roughly let's say about uh 85 cents 85 cents yeah. so 850 is that right am i right yeah you know and so what's our roi that's pretty good roi you know right 90 yeah. you're getting 9600 bucks for 850 right mm -hmm. no yeah. what is that is it 850 uh, yeah it's a 10 RI, right? That's pretty good. That's really good, no? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, so would you get that more people don't do it. I know, right? Well, the thing is the cost, right? So this is the this is where I try to help practice owners change their mindset. Um, yeah. It's from a expense mentality to an investment mentality. Marketing yeah. for your practice is an investment. And an yeah. investment by definition is when you put money into something, you actually get more back, right? You, when you put money into a stock, you want like a 5% return on it. You're going to get 5% more of your money. Now with marketing here, as you can see, you're making 11 times what you put into it. And so um, if you just focus on, hey, this is going to cost me $850, I don't have that in my marketing budget for this month, right? Um, yeah. So it, you really have to look at what do I want to get out of this? What is my ROI on this? And keep a close eye on that. And then you see the value. And yes, this is an, you know, I am paying $850 a month, but I'm actually getting, you know, 10 or 12 new uh, returning patients for this. Yeah. So I think another way to look at it is like if it's cost per patient, right? Let's just say that. So mm -hmm. if, if it's 850 divided by 12, that equals like, what is that roughly? That is about 71 bucks. So it cost me 70, 71 bucks to get like a full plan of care, you know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if, when you compare this number, like Neil, like, you know, like you do a lot of Google ads as well. Like what's, what is it, what is it? Like, cause I, I think a lot of people have no problem spending 850 bucks on Google ads, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? <laughs> yes. Now, if you do Google ads yourself and we've kind of seen this is, it's probably a lot higher, probably over a hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we, we, Google ads that we're doing for clients, you know, we're, we're actually getting that a lot lower. Um, yeah. Anywhere like between 70 bucks. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, or? We're actually, we get, we're actually getting lower than that, but yeah, probably the average will be around 70 bucks. Okay. So it's very comparable. So, yeah. So, so when you're thinking about like, you know, and it, yeah. So really the way I like, you know, like it's, to me, it's kind of like math, right. You know, so it cost me 71 bucks 
to get like a, a, the patient reactivated, which is a full plan of care. So, you know, and, you know, I know you don't like this way of doing it, Neil, but I'm just comparing all the other ways. That's the way we look at it too. Yeah. Yeah. So like, Hey, look, if Google ads cost me a hundred bucks, then like, Hey, look, maybe I should sprinkle some of my money there. Or maybe like I'm tapped out of Google ads. There's not a lot of traffic in Google ads to get me like more. Right. So I'm going to actually, Hey, look, if I could get that and my numbers make sense, then I'm going to spend more to do it. Right. So, right. Yeah. So, uh, so they have the, the cost of professional, uh, Bonnie here had a question about also consider co cost of professional printing. And if you're paying someone to do the writing, how are even with these costs, it's still a good ROI. Yeah, absolutely, Bonnie. And um, yeah, one of the things that we do is that, you know, because we do so many, right, we actually have pretty incredible rates uh, on printing and, and the, the prices there were printing and, and postage in that. Now that's a, a little bit higher in, in Canada because printing prices are slightly higher and postage is definitely higher there, but it's still, you know, even if you're getting a, uh, a six or seven ROI instead of 11, it's still, you know, a really good, um, thing there. Yeah. Rick, one thing I want to want to make sure our audience looks at too, and I have this conversation with practice owners and try to help them understand this because, you know, it's tough. We don't go to school to get, to get business training, right? We're, we're, we're in school to get a medical training. And so you learn the ropes of being a business owner and entrepreneur as you go along. Um, one of the things with marketing is we're very uh, underfunding our clinics in marketing. So um, WebPT does a great uh, survey every year, uh, like state of the rehab. And basically the survey thousands and thousands of clinics. And on average, those clinics were spending less than 2% of their gross revenue on marketing and advertising. Yeah. In comparison to the small business association in the US, statistically across different industries, the average is 11% of what you make goes towards marketing and advertising. So, uh, and in healthcare on average, it was 8% uh, that was going towards marketing and advertising. So in physical therapy, it's amazing the amount of volume that we get for less than 2% uh, spend uh, on that. But so if you do struggle with new patients, if you're looking to kind of really maximize your, your, your profitability in your clinic, take a good look at are you spending enough on your marketing and making sure you're getting a good return on investment? Because that's what will fill up your clinic. Yeah. And I think the key for me is that like, I think a lot of people spend money blindly on marketing, you know, like yeah. I spend money on this, 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 and, and, and when they work with some like marketing agencies, I'm not talking about you, Neil, because I think you guys do a good job. Um, is that like, um, they get overwhelmed with all the like marketing, like metrics that don't make sense to them. Right. You know, right. Yeah. You know, like impressions, click to rate, bounce rate, blah, 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 blah. Like they just vomit like marketing metrics. And, and the simplest way I would do is if I'm going to spend money on, um, on print, if I come spend my money on Google ads, I actually like my simplest like metrics I want to know is like, if I spent a thousand bucks, like on like um, print, mm -hmm. how many calls did I get and how many was booked? So then yeah. I can actually measure cost per book at the end of the day, compare that with the other channels. Then I know strategically where I'm going to put more money in, you know, and I'll double down. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of like a video game that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. One thing we see too, as you're looking with, um, returning patients in, in, and especially using a newsletter platform to send out to, uh, to, to your past patients there. One of the things that you'll see is that um, uh, you'll get a lot of intangible uh, reactivations come in. So yes, you can look at direct calls, right? And what's happening with that. But you also get people that will look at the newsletter, go to a website, then call in from the website. That's hard to measure. Yeah. Or you have people that look at the newsletter, say, yeah, I really need to go back in and they go see their doctor and then they get a referral back from the doctor to your clinic. So then you measures as a doctor referral. So what we like to do is you actually measure across trends. Look at when from a direct mail perspective, when your newsletters are hitting and look at overall reactivated patients during that time. Uh, a lot of clinics don't don't measure that statistic of past patients coming back. Well, it's kind of subjective care. too, Neil. But, no, right? Like it really depends on what other stuff that you're working on. So you don't know whether it is the, you know, like maybe like direct mail or is it maybe because like, you know, like yeah. a therapist like did like follow-up calls and check-ins, you know, right? Yeah, and, and, and I think it, it's an, it's, when you're looking at marketing, it's not just one thing, right? You, it, it's this whole approach you're using many different mechanisms and you're trying to try to look at performance from these different mechanisms, but you have to realize that there's a aggregate effect to all of that. 
right? Yeah. And and as human beings, we don't usually go, uh, you know, hey, that one ad, I'm gonna, you know, just directly call it. It's usually been a multiple things beforehand that prodded you enough to do it. I can tell you from experience being a therapist, and I'm sure you know this, Rick, when uh, you see, see patients, uh, that past patient comes back in, you're like, hey, Mrs. Jones, it's great to see you again. I see your knee, knee is bothering you again. When did that start? And she's like, oh, six months ago. And you're like, why didn't you come back in? Oh, I thought it would just go away or, you know, kind of take some Advil and it would feel better. But, it, you know, like I finally decided well, I got to do something about it. Right. <laughs> so you have to prod your patients. Your patients don't want to come back to PT. They don't want to spend the money or the time if they don't have to. It has to get bad enough for them to do something about it. Right. And that's where you're just trying to keep prodding them, pre keep prodding. Well, them. one thing I do agree with you, Neil, is that, you know, if you're going to spend money um, um, on, like, if you're going to spend your marketing budget, um, you know, if you have a limited, like 1% or 2% marketing budget, I would spend it on actually the reactivations, right? You know, yes. Because, like, like that's a low hanging fruit. So, you know, it is the emails, it is the direct mails, it's actually doing the follow up calls, because like these people are already familiar with your brand, you know, and, and you just checking in with them and being top of mind, you know, so that with Mrs. Jones hurts himself again, like, you don't have to wait six months to actually come see you, right? Yeah, like, it's definitely about four times cheaper to get a past patient back in for care from a marketing dollar spend than a brand new patient. Yeah. Cause I see what, what ends up happening is that like people take that exact same budget, that thousand bucks and they try to like go to figure out how to make Facebook ads work, you know? Yeah. And then they realize people don't buy like that on Facebook. You know, people yeah. just don't like buy the way like saying, Hey, come in to my clinic. You know, I'm going to heal you. Like it, 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 they just don't buy like this. You know, it's a lot harder to close like someone on a cold traffic, you know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so, so, you know, and, and I think like, you know, the reactivations, this type of stuff is like super, super key. Um, let's go into some templates. Okay. Cause you got sure. some like really cool stuff. I'd love to do a few case studies with like the remaining time that we have here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, so, like, so this, is, what is this? Is this a brochure? So we're looking at a, a, a physician newsletter. newsletter here. So the audience for this is a physician and okay. these are uh, directly the, the way this is like a, uh, a trifold, right? So you're actually looking at a PDF of a trifold oh, I see. Uh, okay. split down the middle there, right? So you see that what the, would be the front there, the mailing panel, and then that's going to be the inside flap as they go okay. through. So again, the focus here is on speaking to a doctor helping them realize like, hey, you know, if, if you see your patient having problems with their mobility, think of physiotherapy first, right? Yeah. And then we want to weave in patient success st uh, stories into that, uh, talk a little bit more medical uh, in these, try to bring in a study within that too. Uh, so that's a great thing to do to uh, have a nice piece that's going out to doctors. Typically what will happen in a doctor's office is, you know, this might get in front of the doctor, but more likely it's going to get in front of the office manager or the referral coordinator in that office uh, who will see this. And again, you're staying top of mind with this. Um, with this clinic here, PTO Melissa, which is in Melissa, Texas, um, I think if you want, did you have their uh, letterhead up there too, the, the letter one that went out? Uh, no, no, no. So let's, let's just, yeah. No worries. So anyway, uh, we've been sending out uh, physician um, brochures here, uh, as well as uh, uh, a letter format too, where you have it stuffed in an envelope. Uh, from 500 pieces that went out, um, they is got. This it? Is this it? Yes, uh, that one. Yeah. So they well, had. What's this a, one versus that one? This is just a letter that goes with like. Yeah. So this one's a folded letter that goes inside of an envelope. The other one is a straight brochure with a mailing panel. So that, that's the way that that goes out. Um, okay that way right so you actually have the other one you have to open the envelope to get into so um you know both of them also, really this, well, one has an those... envelope, this one has an envelope and this one mm -hmm. doesn't right you know exactly right? yeah. yeah yeah so from both of these these are actually call tracking numbers on here so you can see actual uh calls that came right from uh this particular uh mail out and uh for for sending out to 500 physicians which was a very low cost uh we got nine reactivated uh, sorry nine referred uh patients from that mail out so, you know, that's, that's even that? less. You're probably talking like $50 uh, uh, customer acquisition cost on that one. So is that the physician calling or a patient calling? Physicians. Like, well, yeah, from the physician's office, basically the referrals that came through, um, you know, the call from there or they gave that number right. to the patient, whether in the clinic. 
Okay, so the patient is calling that or the doctor? So I'm a little confused here. Yeah, I'm not sure on all the details on that. I know that was what was reported to us from the uh, from from PT of Melissa. Uh, okay. They said that they were able to determine that they got nine referrals from that mail out. And how often is like this like things being sent to the doctors? Like is every, it every month? Two, every month? Okay. Yeah. And so and again, once uh, a month. Yeah, once a so month. just to be clear, once a month you'll send one of these like trifold brochures, and then the other month you'll send one of these letters. Is and you just rotate? Is that what yeah, you, you do? Kind of rotate or mix it up, or you know, always experiment and see what works uh, better on that. Have you found a certain format that works well? Because I've seen other people do this, like where they make it look like a medical journal, right? It's almost like, like you know, it's it's almost like kind of like um, um, how do I say it? It's almost like you know, like if you make it look like a medical journal, like they'll read it, you know, like a doctor, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that like being way more effective when it comes to this type of stuff? Uh, yes and no. Uh, so like I said, it's good to pull in some kind of study. But again, it's really interesting with the audience of these is that I said for you, you might get in front of the doctor with some of these depends like how well the doctor looks through their, you know, the mail that's coming in. But a lot of the times you're getting in front of the office manager or yeah. the referral coordinator whoever's handling the mail in that office, right? Um, so having it really medical and technical, technical writing can sometimes go over like an office manager's head, right? Mm. Or a referral coordinator. What you're trying to do is show them that you have a good solution for their patients. That's going to make that there, there's good patient outcomes that's happening. Um, I would say like the, the medical journal style works well as a handout. So when you're doing a okay. visit to a doctor's office and you're going to do a drop off, you're going to do a handout. That's a little better because you can talk about that particular study. You know, if you're visiting the nurse or the doctor in that office. Okay. That, these are good to also like what we do is we'll, we'll direct mail these, but we'll also send some extras to the clinic. And then when they go around, you know, obviously kind of before COVID and I'm sure pretty soon, uh, usually someone in the office would go out and visit some doctors, just to keep relationships going. These are a nice handout piece to the, Again, the referral coordinator or the office manager, or you can get in front of the doctor. It's a good talking piece. So, Neil, let, let's dive into this. So, you know, like, um, you know, I guess in the picture here, you would put like your ideal, like, uh, like your uh, patient that you're going after, right? So, if you're yeah. working with kids, you should put kids. If you're working with like mostly seniors, go after seniors, right? You know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, and is that kind of like the like what you want from a design standpoint, Neil? Absolutely. Yeah, you got to speak to the right age group that you're. Uh, so, obviously, if we're talking about. Uh, and, and in this area, a little bit more rural Texas, there is a little bit older population. So okay. we're catering to that kind of population. Uh, that's why we have that kind of imaging in here. And obviously the theme is around mobility, lack of mobility, functional decline. So you're gonna have a little bit older audience to speak to with your images yeah. there. Um, one thing I will say too, it, 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 it varies with the type of clinic. We have some clinics that are just amazing at taking a lot of pictures uh, internally and we can weave those into uh, the, the newsletters and the materials that we designed for them, the websites that we designed for them, everything like that. And then there's some clinics that get a, a few things and we have to then use a lot of stock photography, uh, to, yeah. to do you find that. stock photography works better than, than real, uh, real? No. no, anytime. That's why, that's why when we were talking about in newsletters, that, uh, content piece photos is so critical so real photos everyone real photos okay. real photos pages. in the chat you know yes. like don't make those like fake like stock like photos that like it yeah. looks like every dentist that you see right like the smiley happy face, yeah. family jumping in the sand right <laughs> so but it comes down to uh that practice uh the people in that practice being able having the time and being able to focus on taking good photos in the clinic to utilize in their marketing. And so yeah. what, what I've always recommended to um, what I've always recommended to, uh, to practice owners is it's a good practice at least once a year, if not more to have a professional photographer come in, have updated headshots of everybody, take a lot of pictures inside the clinic, take a lot of pictures of therapists uh, treating patients. So you have this ammunition of all these pictures to use in your marketing throughout the year. Yeah. Um, so just a good practice. Yeah. I like this. You got that, you know, like yeah, I'm just going to break down the structure. So this is what yeah. you would have. Like you would have like, why do patients need physical therapy? So you're pretty much educating them, you know, yeah. right. Why choose this clinic? So it's kind of like what makes us different from all the other competitors out there. Right. Is that yeah. right, Neil? 
Yep. You got a patient success story, you know, like, you know, this is actually quite clever. Like you're actually showing them like, Hey, look, we're actually, we're masked there, you know, right? Yes, exactly. Right. We're safe, right? Okay, we're safe, you know, right. Yeah. You know, and, and then uh, and the then, call to action is always the same thing. We make it easy to refer, right? Cause again, your audience with this is sometimes the doctors, but mostly the office managers, referral coordinators, because, and what do they want? They want to just make, make my life easy, right? So we make it easier right. for just re fax your referrals. We'll take care of everything else for you. Right? Okay, cool. Just calling it yeah. out. Yeah, this is good. And then uh, what's this thing back here? Why is it like this little one? That's the mailing panel. So okay. again, it, we, if you look at the split into three, it gets folded okay. that way. So the front okay. is what you see on the right. And then that middle part is actually the back part of that brochure. Yeah. That's the, so is this, is this the best call? Is this your kind of unique value proposition? Like we make it easy to refer? Like for doctor's you find offices, that yeah. Best? Okay. Yeah. yeah, for doctor's yeah. offices, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and then, and then uh, this is highlighting the problem, you know, right? So which is yeah. kind of cool. It's your amazing. patients are aware of their declining physical abilities, you know, right? So yeah. It's fascinating because when you when you when you talk to doctors, they really don't get much training in terms of why physiotherapy, like what physiotherapy does, right? And what patients yeah. should they, they kind of think of it from a more of a chemical medical model. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at blood pressure. I'm looking at you know um, these kind of things, but they're not looking at the person hobbling on a cane down their hallway, right? Yeah. We can help that person walk properly, right? And and they've obviously got a balance issue if they're using a cane, so yeah. they have a higher risk for falls. So. Yeah, here's another one. Same thing, you know, right? Yeah. So focus Same on thing. balance. You make it easy to refer. Simply fax to blah blah blah, right? You know, right? Exactly. So, right? Yeah. Uh, I like I this. Patient success stories. You got like lots of social proof, the benefits, you know, blah blah blah. Why choose us? You know, the the and then and then I guess like I guess you got a machine going on. So these like type of like uh, call it brochures, like to docs, like literally there's unique content every single like month that goes up, right? So it's not just like exactly. the same stuff. Yep. Okay. yep. So the same, okay. uh, so different, different themes, different topics each month. Uh, I've got a whole, got lots and lots of different uh, topics cool. for that. Let's dive uh, into patients. What do you think? Yeah. So I here's a, here's a, here's a great group, uh, Pittman PT. Um, okay. They do, they're a great job. They, they provide, um, you know, our graphic designers get to work with them. They do, a, a, this is an example of a clinic that does a really good job of providing uh, great visuals uh, in the clinic. They provide, um, you know, we write, we help to write a lot of like, um, technical content and stuff like that too, because obviously that, you know, that takes time uh, as part yeah. of what we do, but we love to get other custom content. And so they have uh, some fun things that they share through here too. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. So this first, if you were to break this down, this is a newsletter sent to their past patients, you know, right. Yeah. And you said the sweet spot is like three to five, like three to five years, like there's past yeah. patients that have been in your clinic for the last, like, well, I'm sorry if I'm like, you know, um, I say three to five, but what I mean is like uh, for, for your list size. So ideally, you know, going from, let's say two months out, two months okay. from discharge to five years ago. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So this this is kind of like, uh, oh, oh my gosh, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is interactive. Okay, so this is cool. So then what's the- Yeah, so this is a digital newsletter that would go out. So on the email, it'll link back to uh, this kind of, you know, flipping experience for them uh, when they're looking okay. up on a laptop or desktop. Uh, so this theme is around, uh, you know, obviously knee pain. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Good, goodbye to achy knees, you know, like this is good. This is good content here, you know, yeah, so Ooh. The local business partnerships that they want oh to Oh my God, this is good. Like, it's kind of like you're going after the support, the local theme in here, right? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're really good with that. Uh, they also are speaking. If you look on the right here, they're open and caring for our patients. So they're talking about telehealth. That's one of the you know, opportunities right. they have for people to connect with them. They have their, their, their events list in here. So what they're doing, uh, yeah. anything, things that, uh, they have the workshops that they do, um, right. for some clients, what we'll do is actually do the newsletter and then do like a special insert where they might highlight some workshops that they're doing for people, or if they have a special event, or if they have, uh, again, a special, uh, like laser therapy or acupuncture or, you know, right. Uh, this is yeah you know like this yeah this is actually pretty cool like so really you're you're creating good educational content in mm -hmm. here you're like in essence like going out to the support the local like businesses theme which is like really cool you know and then like you're letting them know we're still open and if you have any concerns come see like us for telehealth you know and then you're physically yep. showing them like what it will look like right you know so yep. cool and then look at this what's this stuff 
Tell me yeah, more on this. So, uh, so this is again, like we're telling the stories that are happening in the clinic. We're keeping that emotional content. We're showing transformational stories. Uh, so, you, and highlighting having some fun too. So they had a, a Jersey day, right? So yeah. they took a lot of great pictures of there and showing, Hey, like all these different football jerseys. Um, they have some great patient testimonials and patient spotlights. Again, that's a big part of what you want to feature in your newsletter. Um, and taking again real pictures with that so they can say hey these are real people that have this progression they've, they've had this transformation um and then we get you, you, you know what's cool about this neil is like if i saw like this therapist right you know mm -hmm. right and i saw them on like this yeah. newsletter it was like i'll have this like connection with them and make me yeah. want to call them hey man oh, that's right? my therapist oh, my God, yeah. you know, right yeah. <laughs> exactly like, Neil's wearing that cool jersey man you know i want to call him up right yeah exactly, exactly. right yeah yeah Cool. And, and then the once again, like, the so every single page, you still have content, you know, seven activities to help alleviate pain, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. So this is your typical, like, you know, like blog or like Instagram type of a content plugged in while you're showing clinic culture spotlights, you know, right. Yeah. And you can see here too, a kind of, uh, so this is a digital version and, and the links do go to their particular website pages. And okay. so they get those kind of measurements. So we're, we're flowing things back to the website for interactivity, you know, build more rapport, call back in, fill out a uh, request appointment line on online, book an appointment, whatever it may be. Um, you know, some exercise tips in here too. Okay, um, so this okay. is the back page, right? So is yeah, this the most like, important page of all of the entire newsletter or is it the so, front or the, or the middle? So actually this is, um, so what we do that's a little bit differently, right? Is our newsletters are actually crafted for layouts on um, printing and direct mail. Okay. And then we, we digitize it and lay it out a little differently. So uh, we don't necessarily have the mailing panel, the back part of the newsletter on this. It's a little bit different in terms of the, uh, okay. the way it comes out. So for, um, well, this is kind of ours that goes out, but it might come, it'll be more like this with a, with a mailing panel on the back, right? Oh, okay. And then so we'll open it up, that, get right? that. Um, yes. We'll have the opening here. We do different inserts. So like this is our social media calendar that goes out to for our, so this is our client one that goes out our newsletter. Right. right. Um, yeah. So okay. that's kind of a, the same similar format that would go out for a patient newsletter. That's our newsletter okay. that goes out. So let's so here, wrap up with this page, Neil. Like what yeah, do you, so exercise what do you... tips here. And then we have a nice call to action here about referring friends, you know, send a friend yeah. to us. Uh, they've got uh, QR codes and also um, I believe, I think the QR code there goes to, um, I want to say probably their Facebook or maybe the review. I can't remember. Um, do people actually use the QR code? Like, like what type of conversion rates are you seeing? You know? Um, I don't have metrics on that. Okay. I have metrics on that. But one okay. thing, um, I'll let me see if I can reach it here. Actually, uh, I'm kind of tied up here with my lapel mic, but we actually have a, a rack card, a review yeah. generation rack card which yeah. you give to someone in the clinic for uh, online reviews. Say, so, hey, would you leave us an online review? Here's the card. It looks nice. It has the QR codes. They just put the, it tells them to put the camera up to it. Uh, and it actually works really, really well in the clinic uh, yeah. to, to get people. Then it links right to their particular uh, Google uh, review for their location or their Facebook review for their location. Wow. So wow. it's a meld between the print world handout and then also the digital world, the online reviews. Yeah, actually, that's brilliant, you know. Um, so I'm surprised. So, so that actually worked quite well. Eh? Like them, like, Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually just back to this thing. So like in essence saying refer a friend and get a $20 gift card, you know, does this work? Like, is this a good call to action or. Yeah. 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 And you can see here, we've got kind of multiple layers of, you yeah. know, calls to action that, that, that are going on uh, in that newsletter. Cause again, you have yeah. uh, more time with the person um, right. when they're looking through it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well done. Well done. So this is cool. So this is like, this is like the print version and obviously like you would send an email, you know, you would do yeah. the print and also you send them email, right? I'll, yeah. So I'll the email is like, a little bit different format uh, yeah. with that. Uh, still a lot of the same material in here, but just kind of format yeah. a little differently and links to uh, you know, within their website where they can get uh, this more, you know, built out experience. I think Louise asked a question, like she was asking like, Hey, like what type of software would you re re recommend for emailing out like newsletters, like MailChimp or like constant contact? Is there something that. Yeah, like? absolutely. Any of those platforms is pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so that that's again, formatting it just for, for like email um, to send out. 
So that's important, at least at least getting started with that there. Um, and then, you know, we use Adobe uh, InDesign and a lot of more graphic design type elements, but you can design simpler stuff. Um, one thing I'll tell from experience is that we started in our practice, the very first newsletter that we did uh, probably back in like 2005, uh, it took us six months to write uh, mm. because, you know, you're kind of like, what do I, what do I put on here? Right. Well, how do I write this thing? So uh, it does help to have some outside help put this thing together for you. You can provide a lot of the cool stuff like pictures and ideas and stuff like that, but there's, there's yeah. plenty of different services that can help you put something nice together. And then you can be obviously getting that out. Well, it sounds like you, you're doing you, like, is, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like, you know, you, you literally have all the templates, you actually mail it and ship it to, you know, <laughs> like, so you email know, like it, a uh, social yeah. media, you know, right. up on their website, all that stuff. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, so just we wrap up, Neil. Like, um, yeah. Like, uh, what's this? What's this? Uh, what's this? Uh, what's this? Uh, marketing kit? Maybe you want to share with people. Yeah, absolutely. So, a lot of times people say, "Hey, can I get some examples? Can I get some samples of newsletters?" So, we actually have our Ultimate PT Marketing Kit, and this is free. We'll actually ship this to you for free uh, in the U.S. and in Canada. All you have to do is go to practicepermissions.net slash hero kit. And uh, we'll ship this out to you. So included in that is some great marketing tips, our ultimate PT marketing funnel strategies in there. We have lots of uh, samples of our uh, patient newsletters in that too. So you'll get some great marketing strategy tips and ideas in this, as well as samples of our patient newsletters. So that can give you some ideas too. And it's a great way to start connecting with practice promotions. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And so what I'll do is like, I'll also like, uh, maybe on the video replay, I'll send um, this as well. So everyone actually has a copy of that, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. Right? And go to yeah. also uh, on our website at Practice Promotions, just go to our, our portfolio pages. You can check out, we've got lots of online uh, portfolios of our uh, newsletters uh, and also our websites and, and all the great stuff that we do for clinics uh, across the US yeah. and Canada. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. And, and, and everyone type in the chat, what is your biggest takeaway from Neil's session today? You know, that was amazing, you know? So what is your biggest takeaway? Type in the chat. I would love to hear what, uh, what you love from Neil's biggest takeaway. And so Neil, guess, guess what, what my biggest takeaway was, right? What is it, Rick? What's that? I'm actually surprised that you're getting like a, like a, the type of conversion rates on the, on the newsletters, you know, right. You surprising, know? isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think just us going through your design and what should be actually on there, it was, it was actually quite, uh, it was good. You know, it was very, mm -hmm. uh, very fascinating, you know, so. Yeah. Right? Awesome. Yeah. And I think again, just, uh, from a practice owner's perspective, just look at what you're trying to do to fill up your clinic and maximize the number of people coming into it. Uh, make sure you have a really robust, uh, marketing strategy to keep communicating with your past patients. You know, like I said, it's your, it's your, it's your best thing to do in marketing. Every every successful small business really knows how to leverage their customer list. And so that's yeah. one thing that we can do better in our practices. So keep, yeah. keep that focus going. All right, sounds good. Well done, Neil. This is amazing. So thank you very much, Neil. And uh, thanks for joining us in this episode. And once again, uh, uh, we are gonna send out the replay and then uh, we'll create a blog archive of it. And then uh, let's let more people know about how to do newsletters. So Neil, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Thanks everybody. Talk to you soon. All right. All right.